tonight. iPhone thieves might be out of a job. Another warning that the internet is forever. And startling news about Silicon Valley's anti-vaxxer movement. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 273 for Wednesday, February 11th, 2015. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by NatureBox. NatureBox ships great tasting snacks right to your door. Start snacking smarter with wholesome, delicious treats like apple cinnamon crave. To get your complimentary NatureBox sampler, visit naturebox.com slash twit. That's naturebox.com slash twit. I'm Megan Maroney. Let's get right to the tech feed. Kill switches on iPhones do deter thieves. Today, Reuters reports that smartphones theft has dropped dramatically in three major cities since Apple began using Find My Phone to activate a remote kill switch that can erase and disable a phone once it's been stolen or gone missing. The number of stolen iPhones dropped by 40% in San Francisco, 25% in New York City, and by half in London. A few weeks ago, we reported that the National Sheriff's Association was upset about the feature in the traffic app Waze that notifies users about the location of the police. Some law enforcement officials even went so far as to call the app a police stalker. Well, according to an NBC News 6 station in South Florida, some local police officers are taking matters into their own hands by attempting to flood Waze with fake reports of police in the area. The website Tech Dirt points out that some Los Angeles homeowners tried this tactic last year by repeatedly submitting fake congestion reports in their neighborhoods to keep people from driving through them. Now, neither of these tactics are likely to work since crowdsourcing services like Waze are able to weed out repeated false reports and replace them with reports from re reliable Waze users with higher scores. And if you're planning on using a dating app to find a last minute Valentine, you might want to rethink that, especially if you're using a smartphone that connects to your corporate network. IBM Security released a report today that showed that 60% of the dating apps they tested on the Android platform were vulnerable to hackers. Now, I should note that this kind of research that targets Android phones is a little self-serving since IBM just last week announced a deal with Apple to create exclusive industry-specific apps for iPhones and iPads. Now, it's safe to say that Jeb Bush has not had a great few days when it comes to proving that he's internet savvy. Yesterday, in an attempt at transparency, Bush released a slew of emails he'd received without first removing people's personal information, including some social security numbers. And today we heard news that Ethan Sazor, founder of the site hipster.com, had resigned as CTO of Jeb Bush's political action committee after Sazor's sexist and racially insensitive tweets were uncovered, even after he attempted to remove them. We've invited Roberto Baldwin from the Next Web to discuss. How are Hi. you? Hi, how are you doing? I'm, you know, as someone who tweets nonstop, all day, all night, <laughs> that guy's an idiot. I don't This <laughs> is okay. This, this, the, the idea that you're just tweeting into some void is ridiculous. And I, 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 what was this person thinking? Well, it is interesting because, I mean, I think the tweets were from, from like 2009 or 2008, a long time ago. Like as, you know, Twitter evolves and gets older, we're going to have more people who say, oh, well, that was just when I was a kid. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, how, he should know that they're always going to be out there no, no matter what. Yeah, you know, it's the, the internet never forgets. That's all there is to it. It doesn't matter who you are, what you've done. The internet doesn't forget. Now, there, there are ways to sort of, you know, kind of uh, groom or fine tune your feeds, you know, your social feeds on Facebook and Twitter. Um, but it, especially if you're, you know, going to be running a company or you're, you're going to take a government, you know, position. Someone's going to go through your stuff and they're going to find all the horrible, horrible things you said if you're a bad person. Right. So don't be a bad person. <laughs> don't be a bad and, and, and the one off tweet, I mean, you can take a lot of tweets that pretty much anyone does out of context. You can take a single tweet out of context and say, oh, look how horrible this person is. Um, but when there's a series of tweets, when they're, you know, you're looking at a, a you know, a, a history of behavior, that's, that's when, you know, and, and the fact that he didn't, he wasn't vetted, you know, his social networking, you know, his past social network uh, behavior wasn't vetted. Is it's not 1994 anymore, guys. 
Well, it's interesting because he was, he did come clear about it. His last tweet was um, saying, I've just deleted some old tweets that I no longer find funny or appropriate and hashtag learning, hashtag maturing. Um, that was before he resigned. Uh, so it, it's interesting that he thought that just saying that would be okay. It's it's like when Mel Gibson goes on Oprah and tells everyone he's sorry. I'm sorry, I have rage issues. Uh, it's okay now because I went on it's, it's okay because I tweeted an apology. How about, you know, be a better person to begin with? I mean, you shouldn't tweet or put anything on Facebook that you don't want your boss, your, you know, significant other or your your parents to see. Right. Well, that's the and rule. So, I that's the rule I yeah. use my mom always for anything. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and if you if you have this, this, this desire to, to tweet or to write these, you know, very either, you know, non-PC items, then maybe you should have a fake account or maybe you should have, you know, you should have a private account. Um, but for the most part, if, if you're the kind of person who thinks these things and starts tweeting about them, it's, it's going to be found. And, you know, you can, you can download your Twitter archive which is, you know, in, in the settings uh, of Twitter. And you can go through and you can find, you know, instances. It's, it's, a, it's an easier way to kind of search your Twitter feed and find instances of stuff and delete them. But like you said, if you have a behavior of that stuff, it's, it's going to be a lot tougher and someone's going to find something, especially if you're any sort of public figure. Well, one thing he said uh, as he resigned um, was that he hoped this wouldn't discourage techies from getting into politics. Um, what do you think of that? I don't, techies from getting into politics, that's ridiculous. The, the idea that, te, oh, well, techies should be concerned because, no, it's, it should, it, it should uh, dissuade bad people from getting into politics. How's that? Techie, people who are techies aren't automatically just saying horrible things on Twitter and horrible things on Facebook. Yeah, we probably share way more than your average person, um, but you're not, you know, you're not tweeting, you know, hopefully you're not tweeting racist jokes or homophobic jokes or, or, or you know, you're not a you know, misogynist. I mean, if that's who, I mean, if that's what you're tweeting all the time, it doesn't matter if you're a techie or if you're a guy who runs a sailboat. It does, you know, that's going to be found. You shouldn't, probably shouldn't be getting into politics in the first place. Right. I mean, to be fair, I don't think he was tweeting about that all the time. But if you tweet about it enough, it's still just sort of a view into who you really are, I think. Yeah, I... You know, if like I said, and one or two tweets taken out of context could get pretty much anyone who's ever used Twitter in trouble. Um, but when you have a, you know, you ha there's there's a long, it's just, there's a history of behavior, then you know, you, you end up having that's that's when you have a problem, and and maybe you sh you know you should really either a get rid of all that stuff. It's been, you know, if you're like 12 or 13 and you're just tweeting the most ridiculous things, maybe when you turn 16, you're like, you look back on your, you know, your life and you're like, oh, I said some horrible things. I should get rid of that stuff. But, you know, it's, I don't know. It's it, like I said, the internet doesn't forget and people are going to find that information. Well, how do you suggest, you said print out your uh, Twitter feed. Is there anything you can do? Um, how should you set your Facebook settings if you're going to say things that would be completely, con you know, misconstrued out in the real world? Is there something you could do on Facebook to... And, and there's, I mean, there's, there's things you can do. Like, like I said, you could download your Twitter archive to help you quickly search through it and then find those old tweets and delete them. Um, for Facebook... Uh, when you change the Facebook setting as to who is going to see your status update, you can have it on public or friends, and then it goes down like friends, you know, not acquaintances, and you can, you can set it so it only goes to certain people. Um, you know, you could you could do that as well. And once you do it, every time you do that, it sets that as the the default. So if you usually have it as uh, public and you set it to friends only, the next time you send something through Facebook, you update your status, it'll be friends only. Um, I mean, and you can go through all of your status updates and you can change them to, you know, friends only or private or just going to, you know, a certain person. Um, but, you know, it, it, takes, if you, it takes a lot of grooming to, to take care of that. Um, but then there's also, you know, it doesn't mean someone's not going to take a screenshot who's mad at you. You know, you can have a friend who's upset with you and you say something ridiculous. They take a screenshot five years later when you decide to run for governor or whatever. Uh, that screenshot surfaces and you're like, well, I was young and I wasn't immature and, you know, I'm learning, I'm trying to be a better person. And that's not going to help you when you're, you know, 
getting dogpiled on Twitter. <laughs> right. We should also mention Gina Trapani has um, her site, Think Up, that helps people. I don't know if you've ever used it. It um, helps you see your online self. So if you really have no idea about what all your tweets together make you look like to other people, you can use that as well. Oh, yeah, I should totally check that out. She's Gina Trapani. She makes some great stuff. She does. And, uh, and I, I know my Twitter profile is just uh, a psychotic person. That's <laughs> Who is this guy who keeps tweeting about his cats? Right. Cats and pizza are a lot of your tweets. It's true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so if people want to see tweets about cats and pizza and also technology, they should follow you at, at Strange Ways with no vowels, right? Yep. Thanks, Roberto. Thank you. Coming up, AOL and Tesla release earnings and a White House scandal brought to you by some guy updating the Netflix site. But first, this episode is brought to you by NatureBox. Right now, NatureBox is giving you a chance to get a complimentary trial box of their most popular snacks and just pay $2 for shipping. Life is hectic and it's hard to make the best snacking choices. When you're looking for a quick pick-me-up, do what I do, get delicious, healthy snacks at naturebox.com. NatureBox has hundreds of delicious, nutritionist-approved snacks. They've got zero artificial flavors, colors, or sweeteners, zero grams trans fat, and no high fructose corn syrup. You'll even find snacks with the bold flavors you crave. So in the afternoon, grab Asiago and cheddar cheese crisps or sour cream and onion almonds or blueberry Greek yogurt pretzels. You know you're going to snack. Get smart about it with NatureBox. Start your trial today and get a complimentary sampler box at naturebox.com slash twit. Stay full, stay strong, start snacking smarter. Go to naturebox.com slash twit. And we thank NatureBox for their support of tech news tonight. And now on to a few more stories we're following today. AOL reported disappointing fourth quarter results today that were below revenue expectations, but above earning estimates. This news failed to impress investors and shares of the company fell as much as 14% in early trading. Car company Tesla also reported earnings, posting a quarterly loss that was well beneath expectations. Amid the contentious debate over vaccinations today comes news that techies might be under-vaccinating their kids. According to science writer Joanna Perlstein, a considerable number of children attending daycare facilities affiliated with prominent Silicon Valley companies have not been completely vaccinated against preventable infectious diseases. Pearlstein found this information by searching through a database from the California Department of Public Health. If you're in California, you too can search through the data and you'd learn that at one Google daycare, only 49% of the children are completely vaccinated. A spokesperson from Google said that the numbers are based on old data, but the report also claims that Pixar has only 43% vaccination rate, Cisco 55%, and IBM just over 70%. And today, Microsoft confirmed that it had acquired the maker of the popular Sunrise calendar app for iOS, Android, and Mac. This is good news since Sunrise is a great app, but it's also a sign that Microsoft continues to push into other platforms. Their acquisition of the email app Accompli last year led to the new and improved Outlook app available on all platforms. Purchasing Sunrise will also give Microsoft access to new calendar technology on the web, iOS, and Android. And finally, a million Zoe Barnes wannabes took to Twitter today to break the news that season three of the Netflix series House of Cards had been released three weeks early. But very soon afterwards, they took to Twitter again to announce that the series had disappeared within minutes. Many were quick to describe this as a DC-style DC leak, but a spokesperson from Netflix said that it was merely a technical glitch. Season three will be available to stream on Netflix on February 27th. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write to us at TN2 at twit.tv and watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. Don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.